One of the most requested videos that I've had lately is doing a video on my scanning process because I've been using the Epson V600 for the last seven years. I also went to a Kodak Pack-On for a little bit and sold that whenever prices started going crazy. But for the last month, I've been scanning using the Fuji X-T3 and just a different kind of workflow. And I've actually been really, really happy with the results. So today I'm gonna walk through all of the pieces, uh, you know, what they do, how they work, and show you the Lightroom process. Just everything that I have to offer, I'm going over it all today. But before we do that, I'm gonna let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on things like business, graphic design, most importantly, photography, but there's classes on all kinds of different things on there. And I've personally taken a lot of classes on Skillshare from people like Steven Benasco, Andre Wagner, Dan Rubin, Elizabeth Weinberg, there are tons of great classes on there, and if you guys wanna try Skillshare out for yourselves, you can do so going through the link in the description, and the first 500 people that sign up are gonna get two months entirely free of Skillshare. Okay, so scanning film with a DSLR or mirrorless setup, this isn't anything new by any means. People have been doing this for a long time. I've just recently started doing it for about the last month, and I've been really, really happy with the results. Um, there are a lot of other people actually talking about this lately. So Nick Exposed, he has a video going through his whole setup, so I'm gonna link that below. Um, also, Pushing Film, they have a video on their channel going over a very similar setup here. So um, I think all of our setups are just a little bit different, but still, they're great resources. I'm just gonna show you how I do it. You can check out how they do it on their videos as well, and you can just see what's gonna work best for you. That being said, we'll go ahead and start going through the whole setup here. Like I mentioned, the Fuji X-T3, this is my one digital camera that I use, so that's what I've been using, and I don't have an actual Mac lens uh, made by Fuji. What I'm using is an old Canon FD 50 millimeter macro lens with a cheap $15 adapter from Amazon. You need a macro lens because you're going to be taking photos really, really close of the negative. As close as you can get really is the ideal situation. That way you're taking advantage of the entire sensor or as much of the sensor as you can. I don't have the kind of money to throw on the Fuji macro lens, which I'm sure is amazing and it would probably get me even better results but I decided to go with this cheap $40 to $50 macro lens that I picked up on eBay and a cheap little adapter. It works for me just fine. The camera itself is sitting on this Benro tripod head, and I decided to pick up a tripod head to go on this copy stand for a couple of reasons. So first, we'll take a look at the copy stand itself. It's just a copy stand. This is something that's made for people that are reproducing documents, artwork, anything like that. So it's made with this telescoping arm here, and you can lower it and raise it and you know do anything like that. Uh, this is actually a pretty small copy stand. It's smaller than I thought it was going to be and it doesn't go up very high, but it works just perfectly for what I'm doing and I actually like the small footprint. It doesn't take up much space and I can just leave it set up and it's ready to go. Now it came with this little L bracket that you would actually mount the camera to, but it really wasn't very stable, so I decided to put a Benro tripod head on here. So I have a little adapter that mounts on the quarter 20 that was there and it's going to allow me to mount a tripod head. Now the reason I put the Benro tripod head on here is because it has levels built into it. So one thing that you want to make sure you're doing is making sure that the film camera, or sorry, the camera itself, you know, the digital sensor is going to be perfectly level and parallel to the film because you want your, you know, plane, your focal plane to actually be parallel so everything is in focus. From edge to edge on the negative, you don't want to have anything off because your camera is slightly tilted. So uh, ensuring that everything is nice and level is key and the fact that the tripod head has built-in levels it makes this all just really really simple and the nice thing about this is I have this really long base plate so if I need to like raise the camera or lower it just a little bit I can do that I don't have to worry about messing with this thing and you know shifting the, the whole setup at all um, just having this one single base plate here to raise it or lower it depending on what film I'm shooting it's perfect for that another important piece to this is the threaded cable release so basically this is just gonna allow me to trip the shutter uh, without actually touching it because if I'm sitting here pushing on the button I'm gonna be introducing some camera shake and I don't want that I want my my scans to be nice and sharp so uh, just threading this in there it's just your standard cable release 
That just allows me to thread it in there and just press the shutter this way. I don't have to worry about it. Now, to actually light the negative from underneath, I have this little light table. Um, this is just your standard light table you can pick up at an art supply store. This is the Artograph Light Pad 920LX. Um, I actually have a bigger light table that I've had for about seven years now. And I was originally using that whenever I started doing this process, but it's so old and beat up that there were a lot of scratches on the actual light pad itself, and those were showing up underneath the negative in my scans. So I decided to pick up something new, um, so that way it was nice and clean, I didn't have to worry about that. And the fact that it's, you know, basically the exact same size as the copy stand, it just fits perfectly. Um, I also have these two strips of black gaffer's tape. So because the biggest negative that I'm gonna be doing right here is 120, uh, I just have all this extra space that I'm actually not gonna need. So basically with my negative that's laying right here, I have all this extra light that's just coming up towards the lens and I don't really wanna have to worry about any kind of haze or any kind of flare or anything like that. You know, I want things to be nice and sharp, so I just took some black gaffer's tape taped off the top and bottom there, and whenever I have the different film holders on here, it pretty much covers all of the other excess light, and uh, yeah, it just works out really, really simply. Now, speaking of the actual film holders, these are the Lamography Digitalizer film holders. There's one for 35 millimeter, and there's one for 120. I think these are originally meant for people that are shooting like panoramic images or if they're shooting a Lomography camera that exposes over the sprocket holes and you want to show all of that, this will allow you to do it. Whereas your you know typical film holder with like an Epson scan uh, or Epson scanner or plus deck or anything like that, um, you know you're not going to be able to uncover that. So this uh, it's kind of an interesting little setup here. You can find these online sometimes. They kind of go in and out of stock, but um, I'll put a link in the description and hopefully they'll be in stock. But basically it's all uh, magnetic. So you have this uh, plastic piece here that sits on top. You have this metal piece underneath it and basically it's gonna sandwich your film. So put your film strip down and then you would take the plastic piece, put it back on top, close the lid, and then whenever you lift that piece off the top of it, then you would just be left with your film strip in the middle. It's held by just the very edge of the film itself, so you don't really have very much of anything being covered up. And uh, it works really well. It keeps the film nice and flat, and the fact that I can just lay it down there, scan the entire frame, uh, if I wanna include any of the borders of the frame, or if I wanna include any of the sprocket holes or information of what film I was shooting, I can do that, so uh, it's just nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually start scanning some film. So I have a roll of 35 here. This is a roll of HP5, pushed to 1600. Big surprise there. And uh, what we're gonna do is uh, take some photos and then we're gonna jump into Lightroom, go through the whole workflow, and I'm gonna show you guys Negative Lab Pro, which is a Lightroom plugin that makes this whole process even better. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get some film in here, so. With the digitalizer, again, you have this little metal strip here. And we're gonna take, let's scan this photo of my son, Elliot. He had these sunglasses where he, the lenses were popped out and he was putting those on and just thought it was hysterical. So basically, lay your film strip down just like that. You take this piece here, which is gonna magnetically flatten everything down. It's holding the film strip in place. I'm gonna close this, and now I'm going to lift this piece off, and whenever I lift this up, it leaves the metal piece in place, and now you have your film strip here. I'll try and show you that. So uh, it's nice and flat, everything is ready to go. So you just take this, set it on the light table, and uh, start shooting. So I have the X-T3 set up right here. I've got the negatives underneath, you can see. And uh, basically what I'm doing is treating the LCD screen like a grain focuser in the darkroom. So if I push on the back dial here, it's gonna punch into focus and I can manually focus. And what I wanna do is focus on the actual grain itself. I don't wanna look for you know, the focus point or anything like that. What I wanna do is actually focus on the grain. So right there, that looks to be nice and sharp. My exposure, I have my ISO set to 200, which is the base ISO on this camera. 
that's just going to help get you the best results. You don't have any kind of noise or anything like that. Um, for the sake of this video, I have my LED light that's turned on to light me. Um, you know, just for the sake of demonstration, if I wasn't recording this, I would have that turned off and try to eliminate as much light bouncing around here. But, um, you know, for this, this is going to work just fine. But um, I have my threaded cable released right here. So 1 60th of a second at f5.6, that gets me good results pretty much all across the board with uh, black and white film. So here we go. Okay, that's done. That's it. <laughs> it's really that simple. Now I'm going to go to the next one. Everything is still nice and sharp. There you go. Go to the next frame. Nice and sharp. I mean... I've gone through the process of, you know, refocusing every single frame and just making sure. But then after further testing, I've realized that there is no difference. And at 5.6, at this distance, everything is still perfectly sharp. So, uh, yeah, it once I get everything set, you know, the setup process, raising and lowering this to get it dialed in, it takes me maybe two minutes. And then from there, uh, everything is good to go. And I can literally just shoot, 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 slide it. And it's just, it's really, really uh, streamlined. All right, so we've got the photo here. This is just the raw file as it was shot. You can see it's a little bit crooked. It doesn't matter, we're gonna fix everything. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is set your white balance. You want to set your white balance off of the film mask itself, not the actual uh, photo. So that way it's a completely neutral spot and there you go, you can see the adjustment already. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is straighten this out and crop it so we can crop all of this out. Now, you don't have to do this, but using Negative Lab Pro it definitely helps. So, we're going to go ahead and straighten it out a little bit. I'm going to bring this down I want to set the aspect ratio to lock it at uh, 2 to 3, uh, 4 by 6. That's your standard 35 millimeter aspect ratio. And what I like to do is leave just a tiny bit of the border. I just like the way that looks. Um, similar to making darkroom prints that way where you can see some of the film border itself. Um, you don't have to do this. This is just personal preference. But just leaving a little bit of the border there. So right there is good. So now we have the negative and uh, we've got everything cropped, straightened out. Next thing we're going to do is open up Negative Lab Pro. Now, this isn't anything that I'm being paid to say or I was asked to share any of this. I'm just sharing this workflow because it's awesome. Uh, we're going to open it up by hitting Control N. That's the, uh, the quick key or the hot key, whatever you want to call it, for Lightroom. And it's this little plug in here. And you can pick this up uh, through Negative Lab Pro. And you can actually get a trial version, so you can do this for free. You don't have to pay it to try it out, so that's really nice. Um, I did this before actually getting the full version, and as soon as I tried it out, I was blown away. But we're going to go up here to Color Model, and where it says Frontier, you see you have a few options. This is uh, extremely helpful for color negative scans, and I've actually gotten really, really good color negative scans from home, much better than I ever did with my V600. But uh, for this example, we're going to take a look black and white so we're going to click uh, black and white for color model and then we're going to hit convert negative now it's going to go ahead and do its work here and there we go it inverts the negative and so far uh, I mean right out of the gate everything looks good um, but you do have some tone adjustments here so brightness lights darks whites and blacks so you can see here I can make any adjustments if I want to with the brightness brightness I'm probably going to leave at zero might bring the lights up just a little bit. I'm mainly looking over here on his right cheek. I don't want it to blow out or anything, but I want a little bit more light. So again, just bringing it up just a tiny bit there. Now we'll set it at five. And the darks, um, I actually kind of like the darks where they're at. Um, there's nothing that's really true, true black, but I actually kind of that kind of like that look here. If I wanted to, I could bring the blacks down you know, and really kind of crunch some of those blacks, but I actually like the way everything looks here. So from there, I'm just going to hit apply and it's done. Now, if I wanted to make any further adjustments, I can do so just like I normally would, but this is a converted file now. So, uh, yeah, you can zoom in, get a good look at everything and the grain. This is something that I'm going to talk a little bit more about in a bit, but it looks great. This is HP five pushed to 1600 and, uh, yeah, 
my wild son, Elliot. Um, of course, you can still go in and do like dust removal, things like that. But uh, yeah, Negative Lab Pro is really, really easy to use. Again, they didn't ask me to talk about this, but this is something that the owner actually just made for himself, just for his own workflow. And he was just tired of, you know, getting bad results when scanning at home. And uh, he came up with this product and decided to release it. And it's legitimately one of my favorite things that has been introduced in the film community in a long time because uh, this is just something some guy made and decided to share. Um, obviously, you have to purchase it, but uh, still, you can try it out for free on the website. I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, Negative Lab Pro is great. So you've seen the results, you've seen how it all works. Uh, I hope this was helpful because again, this is one of the most requested videos that I've had in a long time. So I hope it answered some question for you. Uh, again, I would highly recommend checking out the video from Nick Exposed and Pushing Film. Both of those are linked below. That way you guys can see their process, my process, and just figure out what's gonna work best for you. So why go through this entire change to my setup? I've been using the Epson for about seven years and I've just completely gone a, a whole new route. And uh, I guess some people might be wondering why that is, which is a fair question. Um, and I think it has to do with a couple of things. Uh, number one, the V600, uh, when scanning 35 millimeter film, I've just never really been a fan of the way that scanner handles grain. Um, if you take one of those scans, especially if you print one of the scans, and then you take that same negative, print it in the dark room, and you look at them side by side, you can see the grain just doesn't look natural or um, as accurate, I guess, on an, an Epson scan. And it's not as noticeable with a medium format net, uh, negative, but I shoot a lot of 35, and that was one thing I loved about the Pack-On was just how the, the grain looked, but I wasn't crazy about the workflow with Windows XP, and then the prices started getting outrageous, and I sold mine and made a profit on it, but, uh, you know, having something like this, I've noticed the grain looks so much more accurate and just natural as it does on an Epson scan. And this might not be a big deal to some people. Some people might not be able to tell a difference or they might just think who cares, but it's just one of those little things. I like the way it looks. And once I started seeing some of the results people were getting, that's one thing that really intrigued me. Um, but also on top of that, I just feel like I'm getting sharper scans in general. Uh, everything about it, the sharpness, even of uh, lens to lens, like I'm starting to notice what lenses are a little bit sharper than others. And while that's not really, you know, the most important thing, it's just interesting that I'm seeing things like that that I didn't notice as much on an Epson scan because, you know, it just wasn't that sharp of a scan to begin with. And that could be partly user error or just how I was using Epson scan and that scanner in general. But I've just been really happy with the sharpness and the tonality and the way the grain looks, all of that. I just am really happy with how my film looks in a digital state, and uh, I haven't always felt that way. But also, one of the most important things, I think, is the fact that I'm not tied to my scanner going through this whole process. Um, Epson scanners do take some time. Uh, especially when you're scanning multiple rolls of 35 millimeter. So the other night I scanned, uh, you know, three rolls of 35 millimeter in 15 minutes and I was done. And that's, you know, taking all the photos, setting it up, you know, swapping out the film holder with every single strip of film. Um, it was 15 minutes set up from taking everything out and then putting it all away. And then from there, I did have work to do in Lightroom, but I wasn't attached to a scanner or a desk or anything like that. It was just in and out. I had three rolls of film and I can just work at them at my own pace. I can do it on my laptop while I'm sitting on the couch. I can do it at the coffee shop. I don't have to worry about, you know, being attached to this scanner and just standing there and waiting on it and waiting on it because right now my scanner is in our basement and uh, I have two toddlers constantly running around the house and I don't want to be downstairs in the basement all day waiting around on scanning film when I could just be up here hanging out. So it's just a quicker workflow. I can do all that real quick and put it away. And uh, like I said, I can edit and make all the other adjustments in Lightroom at my own pace, at my own time. So uh, it just works better for me. This None of this might matter to you. Uh, all I'm doing is just sharing 
uh, you know, what my workflow is, why I'm doing it this way, and presenting it to you so that way you can decide what's going to be best for you. So, uh, yeah, that's the whole process. That's everything that I can share about it. If you have other questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments below, and I'll try to answer as much as I can. Um, I'm also regularly sharing these photos on Instagram, so if you want to follow there and ask questions there, you can do so, at Matt Day Photo. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it answered some questions, because... Uh, yesterday I put up a little thing on my Instagram story and I got literally over a hundred messages about this so I hope this was helpful so thank you guys for everything thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time